Hey guys, welcome back to the 28 AM podcast hosted by me and yeah, this time the intro's changed because now I finally got a name, the last episode didn't have a name. So our guest for today is one of my close friends, one of my homies and I'm so excited to have her, her name is Kasturi Karkare. Hello everybody, I'm like so keen on saying welcome back to my YouTube channel but I forgot that this is in my YouTube channel. It's the cooler person's YouTube channel. Yeah, so how do you feel being here? This is fun. I don't know how this is gonna go. I hope it doesn't go way too haywire. But no, I'm excited. I'm, I guess I've always wanted to be on a podcast, and this is a good place to start. Especially Ayush Mishra's podcast. Yeah, and I everyone wants stop. to be there. I can stop now. <laughs> so you know, I wanted to talk about like school and all that stuff. So what what is your first memory of school that you have? My first memory of school. I don't know if I get. I guess if we are like speaking of the very first memory, I guess it would be going to school. I don't know. I have like very vague ideas of it. But like, if I also want to think of another memory, it would be in nursery one. Like I always say this, but in nursery one, that was the only time I won a gold medal was for a skill race in nursery one, and I'm very very proud of it. But yeah, I guess running. I have a picture of me in the in the first place, and then there are two other girls of the second and third. But yeah, I guess I think I was very proud that time. There was like a gold medal around my neck. So yeah, I guess that can be counted as my first memory of school. Nice. So I was like, my okay. I have like I have my first memory of school. I never cried at all, but I want to talk about my like favorite memory. This was first grade, okay. And the teacher started with maths. So she wrote on the board seven plus seven. And you know me, I'm always a I'm an ENFP. Jesus Christ, my God! Every time, okay. So mostly I don't like eavesdrop on conversation, but knowing Ayush Majid here, his voice is so loud. The entire school can hear what he's talking about, and every minute he will mention this ENFP. ENFP. So like I am, I don't know. Yeah. So I'm mean, being an ENFP. The man wrote seven plus seven, so I just answered loudly. Is he equal to seventy-seven? Oh God! <laughs> and the teacher just looked at me blankly, and she's like, "No, that's wrong." Yeah, that's a very Ayush thing to do. And you know, it's always wrong. <laughs> You know, for a moment I was like so excited. First she looked at me for a second, and I thought uh, she was going to praise me that I already knew the answer and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And later I realized that counting doesn't work that way. Yeah. It's very complicated. Mm-hmm. I'm, very good, sure. I'm <laughs> very good in maths. I'm very good in maths. Like. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, coming back to maths, you know, there's also we used to go to the same tuition, and we used to always have this competitive scene. Okay, because Sunil and I used to always be flexing who does the sum faster and all. And there was this one particular chapter which I really, really, really loved. Do you remember the chapter? I know. I'll, I'll tell you. It was either it was GST. <laughs> So that was yeah. I know our GST was one chapter where before ma'am thought I knew how to answer those questions and all that stuff. So everyone used to take like five ten minutes to solve those questions. The nice one would be like three minutes. Tuck, 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 okay, tuck, see, tuck. it was not like this. It was not like this. Everybody got those sums. Even I got those sums. But my the tuition teacher, that is my mom. Okay, <laughs> shout out to you, mom. <laughs> so she just she just said once, are you sure pretty good at this? I think the business gene runs in your family, and that's it. That's when his like mind flipped and he started. Oh my god, you know? And she then praised me. I am so great. I'm going to start my own business and I'm going to do this and that. I'm like, dude. You just got one song right from one chapter of GST. I'm like, God, but yes, that's I. I went home and I also told that to my parents and all that I'm really good in maths and all that stuff. And then marks came. <laughs> marks came. <laughs> and then reality struck. Yeah, but that's one chapter which I'm really, really amazing at. No, but like, I like that chapter as well. It was good. I was better than you at that. Okay. <laughs> Let's just agree to disagree. <laughs> but talking about school, like. You I you always say this that seventh grade I watched your video by the oh, way she put up right. this video about how well her friends know her. Yes, and all you're that promoting stuff. my YouTube channel. I'll do more of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so uh, she put up this video about where her best friends guess and all, that, and she kept on saying seventh class was my favorite class. Yes. So why was seventh class your favorite? I don't know. To be very honest, like, yeah, I like rehearse this question. I don't buy. I thought you would ask this, but like I don't know. I feel like the seventh it was just that. I feel like our seventh and like our seventh grade, it was like full of hooligans and the nerds and like the ones who are in between, and it was just such a nice blend. And like we did such good things for the teachers, and I guess like you know that time the pressure of the ninth and tenth it wasn't as much, and like you know we were like like this very nonchalant state, but you know we could do like anything, whatever we wanted to. And to be very honest, we were one of the naughtiest class, and all the teachers were so fed up of us. It was crazy, but I don't know. I feel like that's. And that grade, I realized the importance of friendship and friends, and you know, like getting to know everybody and socializing. So I guess that's why the seventh was. And also, we won our Hindi play. Oh, losers! But we won. How can you call us losers? That's just dumb. Yeah. So for the Hindi play, I was I got selected in the eighth grade, huh. seventh grade. Oh, we won in the eighth as well. So. Just bring it out there. Yeah, so I'll tell you first about the play. Eighth grade, our play was really fantastic. It just exceeded the time. Yeah, no, no, and the play is on my YouTube channel. So go watch it. <laughs> yeah, I'll just link her channel below. If you want to watch it, watch it. Don't want to watch it. It's okay. I understand. Some of her videos are really good. Stop, Stop lying. I love my videos. Okay, good. Okay. But yeah, I think seventh was for me. I'll tell you this thing. A phase where I was actually, particularly towards the end of seventh, I went through a lot of transition. So I, I, I said this in with Jay also. I spoke about this, which is in seventh I was very arrogant, very egoistic. Now I'm not. <laughs> so what would happen was I spoke about this incident where the teacher uh, caught me talking once, 
and she told me to shut up and all that stuff. Second time she caught me talking, second time I wasn't talking, it was my partner talking, she told me to get my diary. I told her it wasn't me, she still told me to get my diary and I just got mad and I slammed the book on the table, uh, the diary on the table. And looking back, that wasn't probably, it definitely isn't the best thing which I should have done then. And that's one thing which I really regret in 7th grade, but you know, post that I was started changing and also that was a transition for me. So yeah, I think for me, but my best was 9th and 10th. No, but yeah, I do feel like like most of us like in school we are very different people till I feel like middle school at least and then we like just undergo so much change and I feel like that's how life works also like everybody is almost like a badass philosophy of life philosophy of life you love this part don't you? <laughs> yeah, this is my favorite part no, so like, I feel like you know till like I feel like everybody just like a badass bitch in like the 5th <laughs> and 6th standard and like especially the girls they have like so much arrogance and attitude and I feel like I was that as well we don't know the we don't value our friends as much as we should we are just like we're like free we like don't really care about stuff but like as we grow up we start getting more conscious and I feel like school becomes such a major part of our life at first you're just like okay play friends school okay school is there but I feel like later you start developing and you start growing you start understanding the importance of things which is yeah I guess just life school life so I love the story about Kasturi's arrogance fifth grade we were in the same class and I don't have much memories about that neither do I I didn't even know what in my class <laughs> shush I called her uh, so her name is Karkare and in fifth year everyone makes fun of others and all so I called her Kurkure yeah. And that was my biggest mistake. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I remember, no, no, here's the thing. So, of course, my name is Kalkari. For everybody who doesn't know, I love my surname now. I've grown to like it. But, like, in, like, the junior section, people used to make so much fun of me. It's, it's, like, it's, it's like so coincidental because I was just talking about my surname, like, a few days ago. And people used to say, oh, my God, are you made out of plastic? <laughs> there was, like, this big thing that Kalkari has plastic in it. So, I was just like, oh, God. And I used to complain to teachers because I used to get so upset. I used to come home and I used to be like, mommy, I don't like the kids in my school are calling me Kukri. I could I couldn't have done with any other surname. Like anything else would have been good for me. But why Kukri? It's like nobody in my school has that surname. So she like think of it as a unique quality. But I, I didn't have the mental capacity to think of it that way. And, and no, but I have had a lot of trouble with my surname. At least in the junior section. But then again, school life proceeds and you learn to like. That's for sure. Let me continue my story now. So this yeah. is a podcast for me to talk. You should. Uh, you should so this podcast, podcast is about me exactly. mostly. But yeah, some okay. me with my guests mm -hmm. talking a bit. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, so uh, I went up to her and I said, Kurkure, Kurkure, once, okay? There was just once. She went and complained to our class teacher. <laughs> I complained to everybody. Yeah. I just, it wasn't, see, imagine. Let me complain this time. <laughs> I just like to talk, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, so I went and I, yeah, she likes to interrupt a lot. A I don't lot. like to interrupt, I just like to talk. Interrupt. <laughs> Okay, so I went and I told the, uh, she went and told the class teacher and that was the worst. You know, as kids, we get scared if the teacher calls us or says anything to us. So now, it doesn't look so big, but the teacher told me, come here, Ayush, come out of the class. And she's like, why are you calling her that? Oh Would you like if someone made fun of your surname? Oh and all that stuff. And Don't that, even uh, make fun of your surname already. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's just those so few negative ones, but that doesn't affect me so much. Because okay. when they start making fun, they, okay, so I'll tell you, they make it as a bad word in Hindi. Mm -hmm. And usually people don't know bad words until 8th grade, 9th grade. Yeah. So they could start making fun in 8th grade, 9th grade, but my mental capacity was strong in 8th grade, 9th grade, so it didn't affect me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the teacher just, she was very calm and she told me not to do it and all that stuff, but in a stern voice and that freaked me out completely. After that, I don't think I've spoken to Kasturi in fifth. No, yeah, no, I didn't realize the repercussion that came out of that. No, but no, I was, I, I really got upset. I don't know, maybe I was way too self-conscious or I don't know what, but I feel like if anybody was in my position, they would take it seriously, considering I was like, what, 8 or 10 years old? Yeah, 10. Yeah, so. Fifth, I was what, 9, 10, something like that. Just 10, yeah. But I was like the cool, yeah, so till 7th I was obviously the cool dude. Cause I actually was cool for being the naughty one, not the nice one. Mm -hmm. There were smart ones who were cool also and famous, but I was famous for the naughty one. And then I stopped being naughty again, my popularity level went down. 10th I started this podcast, popularity level went up and now it's up and up, everyone knows me. This is Ayush. I feel like I'm just gonna stop talking at this point. He's just bragging about himself. That po this podcast is not with Kasturi Karkir. This is Ayush Majitya's <laughs> podcast with Ayush Majitya. <laughs> <laughs> but how does music help you? Like, you know, you've been singing since you were a small kid. She has a beautiful cup song where she was like in 7th grade or something. Please don't watch that video. It's, it's really nice. And she sings so well and I don't know how she coordinates the hand movement and all that stuff. And she also did in 10th grade, she performed in front of everyone, right? Yes, I did. No, in the 7th No, 10th. You had that uh, open mics in school. Yes, 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 for that as well. I've done the cup song everywhere. People make it. They're like, oh my god, you're the cup song girl. Stuff like that. No, but like, no, I feel like music is, yeah, I like music. Music is a good pastime for me. I've always been a lot into extracurricular activities. Because to be very honest, I just don't like to stick to studying. I love, I love to do other things. I feel like singing, dancing, acting have all been part of that. As I spoke of the play, I've been doing dance for quite some time now. And singing, I feel like... Uh, there was eight years. I saw the video, by the way. Yes, I've been in Paranagin for eight years. <laughs> and um, so for the singing, 
one of my good friends, Soumya, uh, she was in the third standard with me. And you know, there was Ekta that time, that year. They, I think they used to have it every consecutive year or something like that. So uh, there was a singing competition and they were having auditions for it. And I I, I was singing, I chosen this song called Butterfly Fly Away by Miley Cyrus. It's, it's, okay. it's, a, it's a very cute song. Sing Butterfly Fly Away. It's very nice. And then Soumya was singing Fireflies by The Owl City. Everybody knows that, you have to know that. You will not believe your eyes. I don't listen to English. Oh Continue. God, okay. No, so like, she, like you know, we, we were best friends at that time, and then she sang the song. She sang it very well, of course, and I did. I sang as well. I just didn't sing that well. <laughs> and then, uh, then the results. I remember I was so upset with my mom because I asked her, "Mama, how was it? Was it good?" And she didn't say anything. She was like, "No, it was good." And I was so upset with her the entire day because I thought I was the best. Turns out I wasn't because Soumya was selected and I wasn't. So I was really upset, but like she's my best friend and stuff like that. So like it didn't really make a difference. But, but that is my first memory of singing in school. I mean, I like to so, so, do you have anything to say? No, I mean like, yeah, I guess, like speaking about school and stuff, no, I want to ask you a question. What is your perspective of school? Like, what do you think? Should like coke like extracurriculars and like school okay. stuff be balanced or like? Okay, so academically speaking, I sucked till 8th. Ninth, I started getting better because of the friends of like surrounded myself with who pushed me to get better. One of them is you're competing with the always inclusions, <laughs> making me like. I'm being really proud. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of marks because of her. Otherwise, I would have, if there was no competitiveness, I wouldn't have done that. But I feel that tenth grade, a lot of people say school isn't required. I think till tenth grade, the basics of everything is really required. So for people who actually want to drop out, I think eleventh and twelfth they can. But I think till twelfth, it would be best if they got to do something and get to. Uh, know the knowledge. You know, people say I didn't go to school and all that stuff, but you need to know, know a basic thing about how 7 plus 7 works. Mm. Like I said 77 and all that stuff. So you need to know that basics of everything before you want to go out there and start something new or something different and all that stuff. That is what I believe. Plus, extracurricular activities are really important because mm. even though the school tries to do personality development and all that stuff, that isn't probably the best way for it because I know so many people who are not uh they can't speak out in front of stages they can't talk to a lot of people at one time and all that stuff so for me i actually always got it from the outside world even for you it must be your drama classes bharat natyam mm -hmm. so that exposure you need those extracurricular activities that is what i feel yeah no i do feel like you know that does make a lot of difference i feel like of course this is like no hate towards the nerds or anything or to who like don't indulge into extracurricular wait, activities wait, she's a nerd also she keeps saying yes that is what i was gonna say okay. to be very honest i am a nerd because <laughs> this i discovered okay so like my friends okay they, they like they like to assert like now it started like getting more they like to assert that I'm a nerd and I continuously say that I'm not a nerd how am I a nerd and now I think I am a nerd like I've come to the realization because see there are two things okay so we had our maths paper right in the 11th we had yeah. our exams going on and the very next day we only had like half a day to prepare and Jaden Kiana watching they know the pain we went through <laughs> so like so yeah the maths was there and then the next day there was psychology and we just had like half a day to study for it so I remember I got home I sat at like 2 o'clock in the afternoon, like right on the table, <laughs> in this chair, on this chair, and um, and I studied from 2 to 6, like straight. I mean like of course, I mean I'm, I'm pretending like it's a big deal, I'm pretty sure everybody it does that. Yeah, no, but like I feel like some people do that as well, I mean like they have to, like the ones who've taken science and all, they're like, busting their ass, but... I took science. Yeah, but like, yeah, okay. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> No, but like, no, so like I sat from 2 to 6, I like I didn't even get up to pee, that's how like I really wanted to finish those chapters. So then I'm like, oh my god, I've sat for like, I think like four or five hours straight and I'm like, what am I doing? Am I really a nerd? And then I was talking to one of my other friends and I was like, oh my god, my all-time favorite show is The Big Bang Theory. And then she's like, oh god, you love The Big Bang Theory? My mom and my dad, they watch The Big Bang Theory and they're like, only the nerds like The Big Bang Theory. Now again, this might be an understatement, but I've always loved The Big Bang Theory because I used to watch it with my brother. That was again part of my childhood. I've known people who've dated randomly. If they've been asked, they've directly said yes and they've continuously changed partners every few months. Mm -hmm. Which I don't feel is wrong because what happens is the energies start affecting you. Yeah. I'm going spiritual, but yeah. In continue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what happens is if someone has negative energies, they slowly start affecting you and your partner or whatever it is, and it start affects the, starts affecting your work. Mm -hmm. While if someone comes with the positive energies and right energies, it can boost your work. So you know, I think we are not at that correct age. Maybe I don't know if I'm that mature enough to know that, but we need to like I don't know when people reach that maturity, but people need to reach a certain level of maturity to understand that this person's correct for them, this person isn't. I'm clearly not there yet, but yeah. No, I feel like it's a good thing to even admit that you're not that mature enough to be in a relationship. But then I also feel like, you know, I mean, of course it depends upon every individual. I feel like you need to know yourself well enough to know when to date and when to not. And I feel like it's all up to the dignity that you keep of yourself. I feel like if you, you really need to think about yourself in the relationship and not prioritize the other person. I feel like you need to prioritize yourself first because at the end of the day, it's just me, myself and I because like it's your, it's you after all and to be very honest, you shouldn't like you know give 
give up everything just for a guy to be very honest especially at this age when we know like almost nothing about love i feel like of course dating and all it's really correct it's good and stuff like that but i feel like sometimes maybe you do need to make a mistake in your teenage years so that you don't do that again when you grow up so honestly yeah i guess dating just is a, again dating is like very very subjective but i guess if you like really like the person then you can leave them i guess i love how this is turned into a dating <laughs> advice session yeah. but yeah I I know this like we have a mutual friend actually. She actually went through a really bad. I'll tell you the name afterwards. Mm. But in tenth grade, she actually went through a really bad phase mm. because of this relationship thing and all that stuff. Mm. But luckily, she's uh, luckily she got out of it and all that stuff. So that was pretty good. Mm. But that's what I'm trying to say is that the wrong person can have these negative energies and vibes on you, which can affect your work a lot. Exactly. So I feel like that's what you need to be well aware of the people who can affect you negatively and the ones who you know can affect you positively. So I feel like you need to be around the people who just genuinely make you happy. Like to be very honest, the people around you affect the person that you are. And I feel like just surrounding yourself with positivity and being happy all the time will have such a big impact on you, and it'll it'll affect everything that you do in life. Maybe studies, maybe talking to other people, socializing, the thoughts that you. Develop. develop when you grow up so i feel like just being with the right person can make a huge difference on your personality yeah so that's why i said the average of five people is around you and you become that like you said about studying mm-hmm. i surrounded myself with a new friend circle and i completely changed yeah now yeah. i think mean, like, yeah, i feel like at this age you need to give studying your number one priority and you cannot afford to have any distraction the distractions at this point because i feel like this is your basis to your entire life because especially in like this year where like in the last year of school right, yeah. which i feel like is like a very appropriate thing right now and like it's very proper for us to talk about school since we are we are in the last year of school but i feel like yeah this is like the basis of your education this will define which university you get into and what will become of your life so i feel like you really can't afford to have any like major distractions in these school years i had two questions which came up mm-hmm. firstly do you think these school dating relationships do they last for a long time mm-hmm. Well, you know, to be honest, of course, there are stories that oh my god, I met the love of my life at the age of sixteen, and we've been like friends forever, and of course, I married this person at the end of the day. But to be very honest, like, what are the chances of that happening? Because again, just as you said, we're like so immature, we know nothing about love. Of course, there will be like a few ex- uh, exceptions, which there are in anything that you do. But I feel like. If again, to be very honest, my personal opinion is that they mostly wouldn't last because it depends. Because you just undergo so much change after school. Like I, like I'm pretty sure, like I experience it now, but mostly with boys. Like they, they just undergo such a major change. Maybe in the way they look, their personality, their attitude. Sometimes it may be in a good way. Sometimes it may be a bad way. But that's why I feel like girls need to be like more alert and judge boys. There's no hate towards you <laughs> or anything. But like I'm just saying, of course there are guys who are like very good and like very respectable and stuff like that. But like we just like we need to sometimes be extra aware of stuff. So yeah, I feel like that is the major deciding factor of a relationship. Okay, so now coming to that, since we're talking about relationships and school, mm-hmm. what's your thought on mismatch? Mismatch? Oh, that series. Yeah. Okay, so I tell you, do you think I watched it? Yeah. <laughs> you totally watched it. No. The thing is that I started with the first episode and it kind of traumatized me in certain scenes. I don't like, I don't like it a lot. <laughs> so like I stopped watching like the first episode, but I started watching the Queen's Gambit and I finished it. I you know, love it. I started watching Unsuitable Boy after a suggestion and it's not so good. Just, I stopped halfway, then I continued again. It's very see. I to be very honest, it's like a very art kind of a series. Like it's more, like in more into like the art kind of section. So like it's not like a, like a novel commercial TV series in which oh like there's love and then this, this this and that. If you all have read the novel, a suitable voice based on the novel, but it's they act so beautifully. Ishan Khatter and Tabu. And to be honest, each and every um, car, each and every person who was in who is in the cast, it's it's a beautiful series. It's probably one of my favorites. Okay, I'm gonna give a spoiler alert first only. So in that series, I started watching and I thought Tanya Malik Malik Tala, the lead actress, I thought she would end up with Ishan Khatter. And I, you know, I had that perspective from the start of it yeah. when I started watching the series also. No, no. To be very honest, everybody would feel that after watching the trailer, but once they start, they come to know that he's her brother-in-law and stuff. Yeah. So it turns out that he's a brother-in-law and all. And at the end of the series, she ends up with a completely different guy. And I thought, yes. you know, the stereotype in Bollywood is the best actor and the exactly. best actress. Exactly. They will be a couple. So that is what I thought. I went to watch that show with the perspective. Exactly. I watched two episodes and I was like, wait, I know. What's going to happen in the end? Yeah, so I know because I'm not watching this bullcrap. This is they're going to end up in the end. I know they're going to end up together in the end. I know that. Actually, no, they don't end up. And I'm like, what? Hmm. And then she's like, go oh, watch it if you want to. I feel like that's the beauty of it. They like also like speaking of dating and stuff. It like just shows that sometimes girls choose stability over passion, which is sometimes a very good thing to do because I feel like how long will your passionate love last? I feel like at some point you need to be stable. You need to have a stable mind as to which relationship you want to be in. Whether you want to only be madly in love with a guy. Or 
or at the same time you want to think about being financially independent, pursue your education, or then of course the final option is just run away with your boy, live your life in your fantasy or stuff like that. But I feel like at this stage, women are given like so much importance that you know there is no emphasis being laid on like women need to be independent, they need to be financially independent. And they need to have their own house and i feel like that's a very very good thing that's being advocated because of course earlier men used to just dominate women and like you know they used to be the only breadwinners of the family but now women have started working and like i just i just really like that series because it brought out the true reality that sometimes you need to make a sacrifice to like you know have a stable life ahead yeah so beyond with that so i'll tell you how this works uh, so i was uh, reading this article mm-hmm. which uh, i think it was on a podcast also i heard it mm-hmm. which is basically what happens is when people are in a relationship initially what happens is there's friendship there's passion and there's love. Mm-hmm. After a while, after a few years, the passion dies out. Mm-hmm. Then there's love and friendship. Mm-hmm. After a while, the love also slowly starts fading away. But the only thing that keeps on going together is the friendship. So basically, and so you need to have that stable thing because if you're going all in onto passionate love and all that stuff, mm-hmm. you you might not end up in a good place. You know that's why a lot of parents. Uh, so in Bollywood movies, we typically see this that when parents say not to marry this guy, there's some chapri roadside guy. <laughs> <laughs> he'll come and he'll like the girl and he'll woo her. And the Bollywood parents are like, no, you can't marry him and all that stuff. I think. And they are correct in a way, but what happens is Bollywood movie wants entertainment, That's so they will marry that chapri with the with their daughter. Yeah. But Bollywood needs to change that perspective mm-hmm. a bit, a lot. No, because I feel like that is what attracts all of these people, and I feel like the, the, people like watch movies and they gain inspiration from it. Like you, you know, movies is like my getaway. Like when I watch a movie, if I see a character, I feel like behaving like that character, and I feel like sometimes the audience is so immature that they. They are the they want to play the character. So when they see these things in which they're okay, it's fine if like the lead heroine marries a guy who's not like doing well, but then he like makes these big promises that no, if you marry me, I will be good for you and I will get out a job and I will do this and that. So yeah, I feel like sometimes it is you we need to like crush those stereotypes because real life isn't like movies most of the time. Of course, there, there are times. I'm not trying to be like all boring that movies are not all. Like, your life can be a movie. I think one thing which I didn't like, yeah. which one movie particularly, Kabir Singh. Yeah. Because in that movie, they've actually shown him that he's violent to her, he's really toxic to her, yeah. and still they end up together, yeah, exactly. which doesn't really make sense. No one would want to marry an alcoholic or anyone who's that. But that is a perfect abuser. example of a pa- of passionate love. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> okay. I get it. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I didn't get that like, completely, but yeah. Yeah. So. No, no, but this is I watched Kabir Singh the first time and I didn't understand the dialogue. I just read it. Okay. I yeah. just read about it online. Oh okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. So like I didn't understand the dialogues properly first, but then I watched it the second time and some of the dialogues which were just mumbled by Shahid Kapoor, I realized them later because I think there's a scene in Kabir Singh where he drops her off to college and she's like sitting behind him on the bike. And then I think a dupatta or something, it's like like not on her shoulders, like fallen. And then she gets down and he's like dupatta thicker. <laughs> So that was quite a misogynistic move, but I guess yeah. But then again, it was a movie. They said that it was for mere entertainment purposes. But then again, these movies affect the audience, which is why also I think it was not nominated for any of the awards. I don't know. I um, just read. It was like a, I saw. So I read about the. I read about the story and I found it really shitty because you know whatever content you consume impacts yeah. your mind. Yeah, so I just didn't want to consume that content. Yeah, that's true. That does happen. But I feel like the act, the acting was brilliant. It was marvelous. They acted very very well. But again, I feel like people again they misinterpret. They misinterpret the. Idea of the movie, so yeah, that happens a lot. Yeah. And by good content, guys, I mean consuming Podex, my <laughs> podcast. You will gain immense value if you're listening to this yeah. to 17 year old. What is this, 16, right? Yeah, but it doesn't. Yeah, me turning 18. So like, oh, two, I didn't know this. <laughs> so one going to turn 18, one going to turn 17, kid discussing about life and philosophy. Yeah. We're, we're mature enough, but we were like, I think we can be as mature. I think it's everyone in the group. Mm-hmm. At times, we can be as mature as someone who is. 80 years old, mm-hmm. and sometimes you can be as childish as someone who's five. That's right, but I feel like that's the beauty of our group. Like, we're, we're such balanced people. Like, just as Jade said, we're, just, we're so balanced in terms of academics and extracurricular, in terms of being childish when we have to, but at the same time being mature when we need to be. And I feel like that is also the magic of growing up. I guess, like, we're going to be adults that is very, very weird. I've been in this school since what? And also, another thing, I really don't know what it feels like to change schools because I have been like in this one I'll consistent school. I'll 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 Huh. Yeah, you can say it before. It's no, 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 that's not. But like, I feel like I'd be so attached to the school. Like, all of the friends that I've made are only from this school because I've been in the school for like 13 years. So I feel like, yeah, I most of this has technically really been my second home. Okay, so I'll tell you my thing. I was in Shiksha till the fourth grade, and I couldn't continue after that because Shiksha only has till fourth grade. So in fifth grade, the most obvious option is should students go to Don Bosco, Green Grocery, or Shardas. Hmm. So yeah. a huge amount of my batch was actually coming to Shardas. Hmm. And so that is what I did. So I was like, okay, I'll get to stay with my batch and all that stuff. Yeah, most of the kids that time yeah. came from so there. Yeah. Initially, what happened was 
Uh, everyone is like, oh, we'll go in the same van and all that stuff. We'll always be together. Fantasies. <laughs> yeah, we'll always be together. We'll be the friends and we'll be that same Shiksha's group together. But I'll tell you one thing, I came here and I'm not really in touch with any of my Shiksha's friends. I'm not really close to any of them, except Makayla. Makayla, shout out to you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but Makayla actually left in first. So okay. we got along in like seventh. We were partners and we started talking then. Mm. So the thing is, what I've realized in changing schools also, it might happen, it's not always that you will lose out on your friends and all, but you, it might happen, you may get new friends and you may get... Yeah, I mean, again, it's like a natural thing to like sometimes like not be that much in touch with your friends. So it's like a human psychology, the one who you're more closer to, like physically closer to, you give them more priority over someone. So you even if someone, uh, you're in, so let, let's say post 12, you're somewhere out of India, we are in Goa or India somewhere and we'll be having VCs and all video calls and all that stuff but obviously you'll give more priority to your friends over there that's true yeah. so that is what happens slowly and but I sometimes there. feel like that is a good thing because sometimes again you need to appreciate what's in front of you of course like I won't be like oh my god I'm not going to keep in touch with my shortest friends at all like of course you all made my childhood what it was and I feel like yeah but like sometimes living in the moment you need to like appreciate the ones that are in front of you but at the same time you can't just forget about the ones who played a major role in your life who played a major role in shaping you I'm adding all my sociological <laughs> phenomena over here socialization <laughs> and the pure group and stuff like that but no yeah I guess but like yeah sometimes I feel like not losing content, touch with your school friends is like a very plus point because you'll always have those friends to rely upon who know your true self and who know how you progress but you know so in Shikshan also we were supposed to have a reunion like even though we're not in touch with each other a lot of us we used to have planned a reunion you know so yeah. I'll tell you this First March, the, uh, 2020, the reunion group was created. We were all excited. Everyone said, our exams end on this day, this day, this day, 31st March and all. And suddenly on 22nd March, lockdown comes in. Oh. And we never had that reunion. <laughs> oh. We were also excited. No, but I feel like, yeah, circumstances. And we were like planning, because there are like 27, 28 of us. So we were planning together, we meet and I don't know. But that never happened. Hopefully, when COVID ends. <laughs> I hope it ends soon. I'm like scared. What if like even one person like gets COVID in school and all of us are like forced to send back. I really hope that doesn't happen because offline classes are like quite better. But to be honest, I think like online and offline, it didn't quite make a big difference for me. Okay, that's for you. For me, okay, yeah. I'll tell you one thing what happened with me. So we had online classes throughout last year and I have, I'm an ENFP so I have very short attention. <laughs> I am. Please, please, somebody take a screenshot of this and make a sticker. I'm going to be doing this for like 10 seconds straight. Okay. <laughs> so, being in ENF, we have a very short attention span. And, you know, so while classes are going on, I'll check on my phone, I'll do this, I'll open other tabs and all that stuff. So, for me, when I came to like physical school, offline school, it was like heaven for me well, in learning perspective. Because I could like literally grasp all the concept easily. Plus, for me, I don't know how this is, but if I focus on one thing, I can easily grasp it. I don't need to like do the same concept three or four times. So you're a visual learner? Yeah, visual learner. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's called that. Probably. But yeah. no, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if I focus on something, I can easily grasp that concept. Mm -hmm. So for me, what happened was with online classes, I wouldn't be able to focus. Even now, uh, in the Saturday in school, so in 12th, we, 11th, 12th, we can actually change our place and all. There are no fixed places. And I was, first day, first few days, obviously that Josh's and reports came out, so I'm very energetic. I'll sit in front, I will talk the class and all. So I sat right in front for the first few days. Mm -hmm. And I was grasping concept. And day before yesterday, yesterday I went and I sat behind next to the window. And I don't know why, I was so attracted towards the outside. I'm looking outside the window the whole time. And two periods later, I decided, no, this is a distraction. I need to go back in front. So now I was teaching. Uh, our chemistry teacher was teaching. And I raised my hand and I'm like, this can I come back in front? Mm. And then I went back in front. Because, you know, I get very, very distracted. Online or offline. Yeah, but as you know, not all those who wander are lost. <laughs> but I should definitely be lost. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like we came back to school again. Do you have like any dark memories of school? Something that define you with who you are today? Dark memories. No, actually, I've been like this how I have. I've always been like a very happy or lucky person. Like, I've, I, like you, you know, even when I was in junior school, I used to be jumping around. <laughs> even now, I keep jumping around. I feel like that is part of my personality. But yeah, as I said, maybe I was kind of rude to like some people. Good, good. Yeah, I mean, no, not that as such, but like, you know, I sometimes, but like, again, I feel like many people did this, like, I used to be like friends with, a, with certain people in one class, and then I used to go to the next standard, and just forget about those friends, <laughs> and I used to make new friends, and then I used to go to the next class, but I feel like it was in the 8th standard when I started realizing the true meaning of actually making friends, because it's not a good feeling when you don't have friends, and like, you're just sitting in one corner, like, not doing anything, but no, I mean, dark past, not really. I, I had, it isn't a dark past, but this is like a big secret to me, so when I joined in 5th grade, I was the top of the class in maths, I'll tell you this. One of the best. I don't know what to believe now. <laughs> but continue. <laughs> but yeah, so in maths, I was the uh, highest in maths. Like I used to get like the one of the highest scores, like first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Mm -hmm. That was my average. My average on twenty was like nineteen, twenty. Mm -hmm. And third term, I don't know what happened. It was overconfidence or what. I ended up getting one and a half. What? Twenty. And that was the review marks and horrible. yeah, that's very horrible. And I didn't know. I was like in the. I was ten. I didn't know what to do. Which was this? Fifth, fifth. 
Uh, so there was this another kid who got half mark less than me. He got one. <laughs> So, oh my god. I was very happy and then I'm like, hey man, what do we do? We can't tell our parents about this. Like, we were like very smart, you know, Chanakya type since we're totally. So we decided there was this uh, outside the door, there also there's the boundary, the wall, and the, next to it has a farm. So what we did yeah. was we crumpled our paper. We were first going to throw it in the dustbin. Do you dare tell me you threw it in the field? Yeah, yeah. So we were going to throw it in the dustbin, but we were like, no, someone may see it or something. So we went there quietly and we were like this and we just threw those papers. And no one came to know until my reports came, obviously, then my parents came to know. Till then, I was like, teacher hasn't given the marks, teacher hasn't given the marks. No, I don't think I've done any of... Oh, that's your dark past? I have one no dark past. <laughs> I guess that's a lot of dark past. Yeah. But no, I feel like... No, I, I feel like I've been way too sincere throughout my <laughs> school. Like, but no, I feel... Yeah, I feel like I've always just been like doing my work properly. I feel like a very proper student. I don't have any fun stories from school or anything. But like, of course, I always used to have fun in school. No, this is well. not a fun story, which no, I said. <laughs> But like it's kind of fun since you have like a dark past or whatever. <laughs> like you know people say that oh I didn't tell my parents that you know I threw away a review paper or stuff like that. Yeah, I was pretty like academically good all the time. No, I was like, I was good at the start, top, top of the class guys. Then I fell down. But then ninth happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that happened also in the dark past. I've never said this online. I've not spoken about this to two people. So many but... revelations. But... <laughs> yeah, so in fifth grade we used to have our diaries and we used to get warnings, you know. Uh, so three warnings is one negative. Good. Three negatives is one demerit card. I was card. doing my deja vu. <laughs> okay, so I got three, for my first three warnings, I got it in the first month. And my parents were really upset, they used to sign it and all. How many, what's the maximum number of warnings you got? I filled up three pages and then I saw through my diary away and I told three them it's lost. pages? Wow, you said that. <laughs> yeah, that's like only, I was really famous for my notorious reasons to the Oh, your nuisance. Yeah, so what happened was, uh, first three warnings I showed it to my parents. They were really mad at me, upset and all that stuff. And then I thought I was some genius and I decided I'll copy their sign. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 sure. Okay. Wait. So, uh, firstly, no one came to know about it. Three or four warnings I signed like that. And then one day my sister checked my diary and she came to know. She told my parents. I got a firing for that. But, I love your sister. <laughs> <laughs> but that wasn't the end of the story. After that, uh, one day my class teacher actually got, she came to know, she noticed the difference in the signatures. And she called my dad uh, to school and all that stuff. And they were at my Maudia's office and all that stuff. And I don't know what really happened, but my dad came and told me they were going to throw you out of the school, but they've given you a last warning. So I don't know if that really happened. But after that, I've never copied anyone's sign. Even in ninth grade, SUVW, I used to notice a lot of my friends used to copy their parents' sign for the community service. Mm -hmm. I was so I love that. yeah. I was so shit scared about fifth standard what I had already done yeah. that I never repeated that mistake. No, but what more can you expect from a ten year old copying your parents' signature? I'm pretty sure you must have done a horrible job. But it, that's was, what it, was, it was really neat. But so okay, so this is the box. You know, it's like that tiny box. Mm -hmm. And what happened was my dad's signature used to go out of it sometimes. Yeah. What I used to do was I used to try to fit it inside, fit it inside, inside the box. Oh god, that's why I used to mess it up. No, yeah. yeah. No, but like, yeah, I guess that happens. But then like again, you learn and you learn not to do dumb shit like this. Yeah. No, but I feel like even I have a, I have got quite a few ones, but I remember the maximum number of warnings I got. But like five in the third standard. That's it. Yeah, that's it. I told you, I don't have any like notorious stories like most of the people in school. No, in 9th and 10th, I was a really better person. But in 9th and 10th, even the teachers didn't care about warnings, you know? Yeah, no, they, they like, just gave up. You remember we used to have like merit cards and yeah. you get three positives and you get merits, if you get three negatives, you get demerits, stuff like that. Yeah, I, I used to connect and, those And cards. like three demerits was a suspension. I never got that. Because I lost my diary halfway. I lost my diary. Threw away your diary, you mean? <laughs> yeah. Price actually. Uh -huh. And you know, it was funny because my parents used to always think, how does this guy always do this diary? And we had to buy a new diary mm -hmm. every time. But now the secret is out. I used to throw my diary away. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't have any revelations like this. Probably not. But yeah, I think, you know, this positive, those merit certificates also, I used to collect them, you know. Yeah, and in I 9th and 10th, in 9th and 10th, I'm like, teachers, like, take a positive for this. I'm like, and who's going to walk up over there and take do a we, positive? Do we, do we, very honest, I don't even know if those merit certificates come. Like, do they help when we get into university? No, right? No, no. For what reason did he want those? Like, <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah, I think the best merit certificates, do a course on Udemy, that will help you. Or do a podcast like me. I don't know if it'll help. I was just speaking cool. about this being a very narcissistic podcast, <laughs> and then he still continues to be a narcissist. <laughs> so... <laughs> But what others? Yeah. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for being a part of this story. This was really, really fun. This was really fun. I'm happy the question just like went with the flow, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But any last advice for anyone who's watching from 16 year old Kasuri before you turn 17? I think mean, I just guess like I'm gonna like make it very cliche, but just live your life. <laughs> Every day is a blessing, make the most of it. Stuff like that. And yeah, enjoy school, enjoy your life, make friends, live life, do what you want to in your life, and yeah, just like do what makes you feel happy and do what makes your heart smile. Okay, I'll be linking her YouTube channel, her Instagram, are you on Twitter? No, not Twitter. Okay, so I'll be linking her YouTube and Instagram. You all can check out her YouTube videos, subscribe to her, 
follow her. Subscribe to me, obviously. You want to tell them to subscribe now. I gave you a shout out. Subscribe to Ayush Vijitha, everybody. What's the name of the channel? Ayush Vijitha. Subscribe to Ayush Vijitha, everybody. He makes great podcasts and now even more because he's made them with me. Yes. <laughs> Just kidding. No, but yeah, subscribe to him. He's a cool dude. So yeah. Bye.